let's look at regression lines and let's try to understand the difference between correlation and causation. And those are these are two concepts that if you walk away with anything from any math class, I think that understanding these two and their differences is probably one of the most important things you can do. So let's hit some vocab real quick because we've got a few words going on here. We have a trend line, which is also called a line of best fit, which is also called a regression line, which is even sometimes called a least squares line or even a least squares regression line. So it has a lot of different names, but all it is is it's a line that shows the pattern in a scatter plot. So if you have a bunch of points in a scatter plot and you draw a line that kind of fits that pattern, you could call it one of these things. Next one is correlation. Correlation is how well the data form a good pattern. So for example, if you have something that looks like this where there's a very obvious line that's being formed, how well it forms a linear pattern. That's the correlation, or that would be high correlation. If you have something like this, where there's clearly not much of a pattern going on, that would be low correlation, because there's not a clear pattern. And then causation. This gets to the question of why. Causation is how much one variable causes the other to happen. So it's not just that they're related, but it's the reason why. So when it's causation, there has to be a reason. So looking at this example, we want to draw a scatter plot. We're going to sketch a trend line, which is going to be a little different than using a formula, which we'll do later. And then we're going to use it to predict our missing value. So let's go ahead and we got 1, 1, 3, 5. We're just plotting points here. 4, 7, 6, 11. 712, 815, and then we don't know, 10 in this mystery one, so we're going to deal with that in a second. What we want to do is fit a pattern to this, and you can see that these dots form a pretty straight line. So if I had to run a line kind of right through it, it would probably look something pretty close to this. I'm going to run a little farther here. So, so running a line through these, Although this line that I drew might not be exactly right, it's going to be pretty close. The idea is to fit a line that kind of overlaps those points as best as you can. Now, it says use the line to predict the missing value. So the missing value is 10. And if you were to keep numbering here, this would be 9 here. And then if you had to keep going out, that would be 10. So when x is 10, you follow x all the way up and you see where does it intersect and it would be somewhere around here that you're looking for so it would intersect somewhere around up here so that would be the prediction and now what is y up there if you're counting by threes on the side that would be about 18 so if you had to make a prediction here I would say that y is about 18 so we made our scatter plot, we made our trend line, or line of best fit, and then we predicted what y was going to be when we had an x of 10. So by just looking for a point on the line, that's how we made our prediction. Now causation is when someone looks at the relationship and decides that one variable causes the other to change. Scatter plots might give strong correlation, a good pattern, kind of like the graph above has a good pattern, but it doesn't always mean that there's a cause. So you have to do a careful study. If you ever take a stats class, that's something you'll learn all about, is how do you design a study that can figure out the why, the what causes what. Now, in this example, there's a strong linear relationship. You could go ahead and draw a line that fits really well to that data. So the correlation is very high. It's the relationship between uh, reading score and shoe size. And you're thinking, wow, that's, your shoe size has such a strong relationship with your reading score. People with bigger feet are better readers. That's what this graph says. And this is actually true information. So what's going on? So you can assume that the correlation is strong. The correlation, the uh, relationship is very strong. However, doesn't mean that shoe size causes you to have a high reading ability. 
Yes, they are linked, but it doesn't mean that shoe size is the reason that people have a high reading score. There's something called a lurking variable. There's another piece of information that you don't really see here that's causing both of these to happen. And in this case, it's your age. So if you are older, you are a better reader. And if you are older, you have a higher shoe size. Now obviously at a certain point that doesn't continue on, but when you're dealing with smaller shoe sizes like this, you're looking at younger children. So as children get older, they become better readers, and as children uh, get older, they have larger feet. So age causes both of them. So many times in relationships like this, there's something behind the scenes that's causing both the X and the Y. So correlation, just because there's a strong pattern, doesn't mean that X causes Y. It doesn't mean that there is causation present.